Happy New Year, everyone. I'm very thrilled uh, to have everybody join me. I think everybody didn't hear it. So introducing myself, I am Rose Horowitz, Pulitzer-nominated journalist and the founder and host of Women to Follow. Uh, and I'm very thrilled that Liza is with me here today. Uh, and uh, I think I was saying, and so I'll say it again. Uh, anyway, no one heard me. Uh, but uh, talk about gratefulness. I am uh, so thankful for Stefan Kaplan, who's a terrific producer and has been very loyal uh, and worked so hard uh, and got us back up and running as we see tonight. <laughs> so, um, uh, and uh, tell us where you're watching from. We're live on Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, uh, Twitter. And we, thanks to Liza, we are also live on uh, Li Liza's um, two, her personal and her professional uh Facebook channels. So please tell us where you're watching from and uh, tell us any questions you have for Liza and we'll be sure to look at them. So let me tell you a little more about Liza. Uh, when Liza Donnelly started the New Yorker magazine in 1979, she was one of four women cartoonists. It wasn't until five years ago that the New Yorker's glass ceiling for cartooning was shattered. In an issue in the fall of 2017, there were more women cartoonists than men uh, published in the magazine. Donnelly is the author of Very Funny Ladies, The New Yorker's uh, Woman Cartoonists, revised and published in 2021. Um, she's a keen observer uh, and a pioneer in her field and the creator of digital live drawing. She has drawn live for me media outlets such as CBS News, The New Yorker, Fusion, and NBC and covered uh, the Oscars Live and the 2017 presidential inauguration, among other events. Um, she shares her cartoons and writing on Substack and Medium. Uh, and she's the author of 18 books for adults and children. Uh, her book, Women on Men, was a finalist for the Thurber Prize uh, for American Humor. Uh, and she's been a contributor to the New York Times and Washington Post, um, among other publications. Uh, her TED Talk drawing on, called uh, Drawing on Humor for Change has been translated into 40 languages. And she's also served as a cultural envoy, envoy for the U.S. State Department. So welcome. It's a very Thank impressive uh, resume. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me. I've been, I've been watching you do this Women to Follow for years. It's great. You have, and you've, you've, uh, you were one of the first, uh, I, I tagged you when I did the original, the first tweet and used woman to follow, uh, mm -hmm. because I was looking for, to tag people that were leaders in different fields. Uh, so, so Liza retweeted and, and oh. named, uh, lots of women cartoonists and artists around the world. So thank you. It's really an thank honor you. to have you. Uh, I thought I would, uh, Let's see, we have, uh, let's see, some comments. I'll just, um, Paula Kiger is joining us from Tallahassee, Tallahassee and saying she's a big fan Paula. of Liza's work. Uh, and Jennifer Navarrete, um, who's a great uh, uh, podcasting at Web3, is saying great to kick off uh, 2023 um, with you and women to mm -hmm. follow. Uh, so in looking at your work, I was, I was thinking about, um, I was struck by this quote that I, I found in, um, in uh, this is Liza's uh, Very Funny Ladies mm -hmm. <laughs> book. Uh, I now try, you wrote, I now try to put a woman as the speaker whenever I can in order to avoid the stereotypical every man talking. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us about that and yeah. How that's uh, well, about. that that um, I've been doing that for a while. But um, back when I started in the dark ages, it, it, you know, I wanted to be a cartoonist, but I, I I wasn't really thinking about gender. I was a feminist from very early on, but uh, I just wanted to be a cartoonist. So I didn't think about um, using my cartoons in that way as a, as as a way to explore gender and feminist issues. I just wanted to be a cartoonist. Uh, and so when I drew people, generally, I just drew a man because that's sort of how I grew up. I grew up following cartoons and most of the cartoonists, in fact, all the cartoonists I followed back then were men. Now, I didn't even notice uh, particularly. But um, 
um, until a little bit later. So at some point in my mid career, it dawned on me like or earlier, actually earlier than mid career, dawned on me. Well, I could make this person a woman speaking. Why not? Because I think in the in the generation before me, um, if you drew a woman in a cartoon, uh, it usually had to do with women's things, you know, like shopping, cooking, raising children, or um, being a secretary. Um, and that certainly has changed. And it was it changed in my lifetime. So now I can draw women speaking and it's, an, and she's every man. She doesn't have, it doesn't have to be a woman speaking. It's, it's a person speaking. So it's a little small things like that sometimes that make a difference. I think so. I mean, even if you look at journalism, right, the first, um, even as late as what the fifties, um, like at the Washington post, if you were a woman journalist, you were covering things like fashion or cooking or, home life you know you weren't covering mm -hmm. politics mm -hmm. uh and how many uh, just as a question um i know you're you're political in your cartoons mm -hmm. but how many um you know is that still a field that is dominated by by men mm -hmm. editorial cartooning um is still mostly men um there are some notable uh, women who won Pulitzer Prizes, like um, Ann Telnus, the Signe Wilkinson was the first woman to win a Pulitzer Prize. She just retired this year. Um, but Ann is still with the Washington Post, a really great political cartoonist. But mo the, there aren't that many women drawing political cartoons in that kind of old school, you know, newspaper political cartoons style, or, or not style, but uh, format. Um, the New Yorker has always had political cartoons or editorial cartoons, drawings, and um, I've been selling them off and on to them for ever since I, since 83 was the first one I sold. So um, it's a different, if you know New Yorker cartoons, they're kind of a different way of approaching politics than uh, say you might get in the Washington Post. But um, mm. still, I feel like Rose, I feel like um, drawing cartoons in a political way about daily life, that which is sort of what New Yorker cartoons are, Mm -hmm. um, can get at feminist issues and women's issues because women's women's daily lives are political, right? We every we we often have to deal with uh, political things, and I don't mean political in the terms of the Congress and the Senate and the you know the leaders. I mean in terms of dealing with um, women's rights. So, yeah, I think that uh, I think one of the things you talk about in your book is. Uh, women approach political, you know, the politics differently than men. That it's not, and, and in, in fact, the whole kind of caption thing. It's not like a get. It's not like a one-liner. There's a, a different approach. Uh, well, I, I I want to correct you though. I don't think women are okay. drawn differently than men. I, I try to avoid saying that, and because it's not true. Um. um what probably you were talking about in my book is that when um, when I joined in '79 at the New Yorker, there were four of us, right? And when I when I looked at why there were because there were no women in the '60s in the New Yorker, um, there were there were some women in the '20s and '30s and '40s and '50s, but not none 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 in the '60s. So I looked at why 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 did it change in the '70s? Why did you know the the cartoon editor his name was Lee Lorenz? He just died this year or last year. Um, and I, and I talked to him about it, interviewed him, and I said, were you looking for women cartoonists? He said, no, he was looking for new ways to express humor. So when you look for different ways to express something, you look for, if you open up the doors or broaden the, um, no, pan, no pun intended, broaden the standards for what's considered good, then you might get more diversity. Like Roz Chast, for example, myself, my drawings are a little bit different than what what uh, was being drawn at the time in in the early seventies. And, uh, and he brought in many other women too, but it, it, we just have a different, uh, we don't all draw alike, but we have a, we weren't, this is what you were talking about. It's hard to explain. Um, I think a lot of the cartoons in the fifties, not all of them, but a lot of the cartoons in the fifties mm -hmm. and sixties were very jokey oriented, very, um, yeah. and have, Lee brought in more different kinds of humor, more, more mm -hmm. diverse kinds of humor. So, and, and that, ha that, tr that's true for, Racial diversity too, which he mm -hmm. didn't really, uh, that cartoon editor did not bring in any new 
people of color, except for one, I believe. But um, the new cartoon editor has, she's opened up the doors even wider. So there's more diversity in race and gender. It's a and long you, answer. You talk about, <laughs> no, no, no. Um, you talk about uh, some other, you know, other humor that was, you know, women and humor in terms of yeah. women comics. So talk a little about that and how that fits into this changing picture. Um, yeah, well, women, um, if you think back to the 50s and 60s, a lot of the humor at the time was very sexist. So, and there were women comedians, we know Phyllis Diller and Lucille Ball, and but she was not a stand-up, she was more of a writer and a performer. Um, Phyllis Diller comes to mind. But um, she, Phyllis Diller sort of fit into the mold of the stand-up comedian who would de deprecate herself and women. She'd sort of make, which is fine. We, we should all do that. <laughs> but um, Joan Rivers. Think, uh, yeah, well, Joan Rivers, right. Um, but I think, uh, and, and they're, they're really great role models, I, both of them. Um, and I remember particularly watching Phyllis Diller when I was a, a young girl. Um, but it was it was sexist humor at the time, and that changed in the '70s. And I um, I'm not a I'm not a a theorist on on humor in general, but I I've studied women in comedy, women in humor, and I just think um, things were opening up more in the '70s. And maybe it had to do with uh, you know the the change in culture, the hippie movement, and you know just people, women coming out, the, the second wave of feminism, women mm -hmm. feeling more um, at home, speaking their minds, and and being humorous, and uh, but society still wouldn't. The clubs were terrible in, in terms of letting women in the door. Um, mm. If they did let one, women in, they'd say, "We have one woman. We, that's all we need." <laughs> I've, I've talked to women. <laughs> and that's what they say, "Well, back in the seventies, they say, oh, we have one woman. We're fine. We don't need you to perform." <laughs> so that's changing. It's hugely different now. It's great. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and. Let's see. Uh, I think there's. Um, well, I guess let's let's talk about your process. You know, tell us how you start each day, and um, and I don't know if you can share if we're set up for that, but uh, you know how you get ideas for your drawings, and if you have anything mm -hmm. you can show us, uh, people. I know that I'm familiar. I've seen you work from your iPad, but uh, people may not understand how you do that, and. Mm -hmm. Well, my process uh, with cartoons is different than drawing the live drawing that you're talking about. So cartoons are uh, idea driven usually and or visually driven. So I sit at my desk, um, not every day, but in the morning I'll sit at my desk and um, doodle and, and write down words or, you know, phrases. Uh, I'll pull stuff out of the news trends and and just sit there and it's it's work you just have to sit with and try to put things together put things in people's mouths put people in settings um and it's kind of a mysterious process most of us don't really know how it comes together but it does um for a lot of us and do, and it doesn't some weeks it doesn't come together at all so you just do a lot of sometimes you some weeks you do pretty bad cartoons um but you just have to keep working you have to keep doing it um, and the process is you have, you have uh, like a set time, you know, like a eight to yeah. ten, eight to twelve, or well, I'm not that. I mean, I try. Yeah, the creative ideas are better in the morning, so I'm better. I'm better in the morning with, mm -hmm. with that kind of thing. Um, and the New Yorker has accepts submissions every Tuesday, so Tuesdays mm -hmm. are my deadline. So I try to send in six or eight drawings, sketches of of cartoons to them every every Tuesday so um and every week it's the same same process <laughs> <laughs> do you ever look at a blank piece of paper and say you know well how am I going to do it this week or you know I mean well, you've done it yes. so many years <laughs> yes. <laughs> almost every week so <laughs> um but uh I I uh, you know I'm married to a cartoonist I, I, I think you know that and many mm -hmm. people do I met Michael, we were both at the New Yorker and we met that way, but I take a page out of his book and I know he's, he's watching, I think Mike, hi, Michael. Um, <laughs> but he is very consistent. He draws every single day. He, he does either one or two drawings or more. He'll just sit at his desk, but well, he sits on the draws, but he, 
makes a point of doing one one or two a day at least. Mm -hmm. um, and that's that's a great way to, even, you know, with writing even, I think that's the best. Mm -hmm. You really have to do that. You have to put something on mm -hmm. paper every single day. And you get, mm -hmm. out of, you get out of practice if you don't do that. Mm -hmm. So... Um, there's no lightning strikes if you don't if you don't do it for a week and you leave it. For no, a yeah. That Tuesday, yeah. Right? You, don't really, you don't really know where the ideas come from. It's kind of it's kind of a uh, uh, mysterious is a little too strong word, but it's um, serendipitous. It's sort of mm -hmm. random collisions of things on your paper and your brain. You have to listen to, to yourself think. Mm -hmm. um, listen to the culture. You, you know, kind of keep an eye, keep an ear on what's going on, what's being said. At least I do. Not all cartoonists mm -hmm. do that, but uh, uh, I like to. But you are you reading a few papers each day and watching broadcasts? Yeah, I watch. I read the Times and the Post mm -hmm. every. Not all of it, but um, I check it every at least once, twice, three times a day, um, and. Uh, I look at the New Yorker Atlantic. I look at them to see what people are talking about. Um, mm -hmm. I don't really watch the news anymore. I used to for a long time. I'd watch the regular bro broadcast news, but uh, uh, it's funny. I, I don't. I don't really need that anymore. It's it's fun sometimes to watch the broadcast news, like mm -hmm. at seven, and see how they are curating the news. Right? Like what mm -hmm. what do they think is is the best and most important stories of the day? So yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I, I I do that when I when I can, because mm -hmm. it's interesting to see if they're usually they're taking their cues I think from the newspapers, but uh, <laughs> you know, so but but not always. So it's interesting to see, uh -huh. um, you know how how people are absorbing and putting it out there, what they're doing, mm -hmm. and for women to follow to see, you know, I sometimes. Uh, hear a woman that sounds, you know, an analyst on Soviet Union, you know, on, on what's happening in Ukraine and say, wow, I had to yeah. get her on my show. You know, that? So. Right. Yeah. That? That a lot. Like, as soon as I want to know who somebody is, I Google them and I, and then I, and I read their Wikipedia if they have one. And then I see their Twitter. I go to their Twitter. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. still a huge fan. I'm always been a huge fan of Twitter. Um, it's in this recent incarnation. I'm not so mm -hmm. happy about, but I, have, I have, obviously I haven't left yet. Mm -hmm. I may not. <laughs> <laughs> this is wonderful. Uh, this is, um, tell yeah. us about this. This was the January 6th uh, committee. I um, was not there. I wish I had been. I, I'd like to be live if I can in the, in the room. Um, but I can't get in many places, of course. So this is the live drawing that you were talking about. And um, uh that started about um, seven years ago now, the live drawing. I got an iPad as a gift and I started drawing the State of the Union address one year. And the app I was using, which, using, which is called Paper, if anybody's oh. a drawer out there, um, it's a great app. And you can do the drawing quickly, and you, and you or, or not quickly, but I do them quickly. And then you send it out on Twitter immediately. And I did it that year and it, be, it became clear on Twitter that this was something different and people liked it. They were amused by it. And they, and I got a lot of retweets and a lot of attention. So I just kept doing it at different events from my television at first. And then, then I, a friend helped me get connected to the Academy of motion pictures. And I got to go to the Oscars the red carpet. And I've been there four or five times now um, mm -hmm. to, to, to draw what I see and, and not just the celebrities. If I can, if I can see them or catch them, but, but the people, and the yeah, and the woman. There's one woman yeah. painting painting the sidewall. Um, uh, the, the the kitchen. I get to go in the kitchen and Wolfgang Puck. I've met him, and it's really fun. <laughs> and then I, and, oh, and then okay. I got hired by C CBS to do this a little bit. Um, I was working with the CBS this morning, their weekly morning uh -huh. show, mm -hmm. in their green room, and I would draw the guests and I draw the hosts, you know, the anchors, and mm -hmm. and they send me places. I got to go to the inauguration, mm -hmm. not in the room, but uh, on the periphery. Got to go to the DNC, so and I really love the politics. I went to the White House. I love uh -huh. the political ones. I went to the women's marches. So it's like a visual mm -hmm. journalism, um, yeah. and I love it. Um, I love doing it. It's uh, it's something that means a lot to me. I, I feel really privileged because I I, um, I think it was in 2016, and I think uh, Stefan has a, a picture maybe, but Ali. Uh, Velshi was was speaking at uh, Sri Srinivasan's social media weekend, 
uh, uh-huh. there you are. And uh, yeah. he, he at the time was, I think he was between jobs and talking about, he was not at Algeria Al- 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 anymore, you know, at, at yeah. that time, I think it had folded and he was talking about starting up a new network or, or something. And, you mm-hmm. know, and then he was, mm-hmm. he's now on uh, MSNBC. Uh, but mm-hmm. there you captured him. And so mm-hmm. what Liza, you know, would do is, is capture that, have a, you know, do a drawing very quickly and send it out uh, on Twitter. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, I guess, like you say, you saw how successful that was. And, uh, but, but you really invented that. And I, I to me, it's, I, in Wikipedia, they called it a new form of journalism. You know, oh. this, Yes. You should check. <laughs> well, I, I I have to say, you know, live drawing has been around for centuries. People mm-hmm. walking the streets and drawing on paper, and, mm. and um, so that's obviously not new. But using the iPad to do it and and digital media to send it out mm-hmm. there, um, yeah, is something that I came up with, or I just sort of fell into and 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 uh, expanded on. So, mm. yeah. Uh, you know, if I look at like the arc of your career, you know, you started as a cartoonist, you, years you've been a cartoonist, but but you have embraced, you know, you've really been an early adapter of technology. Yeah. Um, uh, my family makes fun of me. I, I'll just tell you a, a, a yeah. little tidbit. Um, when we got our first computer, uh, I don't remember what year it was, but uh, very, we were, we were, early Apple people, we're still Apple people. Um, I, uh, you know, I, I get, I get, I get the CD or whatever it was, or the, maybe it was a CD player. I know it was a computer, but I start immediately start wanting to use it and putting, pushing things in, you know, inserting things. And, and they, and my family likes to make fun of me that I'm just too impatient. I got to get it going. I don't, who cares about instructions? I'm just going to start using this thing and I'll figure it out as I go along. So I'm kind of like that. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. And do you, does it um, do you surprise yourself in in the way you've adapted and you know do you do you consider that something that was always in you as a you know as from when That's you started? That's a great question. That's a great question. I think I'm a person that likes um, new experiences. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got that from my father when I was in high school. He said he and my mother decided that we were going to go live in Rome for a year, um, which was something families didn't do in the 70s. Mm-hmm. I mean, more people do it now, but uh, and I didn't want to go. I was, you know, ensconced in high school. But once I got there, I just loved, loved it. And I think my drawing career sort of took off mm-hmm. at that time. I did. Li- I sort of did live drawing there in, in a way. I would draw people in Rome. Mm-hmm. And also yeah. when you're away from your country, like uh-huh. we were. And you're looking at your your own country from afar. It gives you a great mm-hmm. perspective on on mm-hmm. on life and culture. And I think it really solidified my view of the world. And um, but ever since then, I think I really enjoyed. I love traveling, and I like new experiences and new ideas and new combinations of things. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's exciting. Mm-hmm. Uh, very exciting. Uh, do you, do you have a chance? Uh, is it possible you show us any anything? I, I couldn't get the uh, technology to work. I'm not used to StreamYard. Okay. So, um, mm-hmm. but this is my iPad. Um, I don't think it'll show up very well. But let me just. Okay. This is um, this is this is the program I use, and it's a very simple, mm-hmm. like a palette almost. There's no dials and numbers and gauges and stuff. Which is helpful for some things, but not. I don't really like it. But um, let's see. Uh, so yeah, it's um. When I when I'm in a when I'm live drawing, I don't. I I I'm not a. Uh, it's really you really can't see it, can you? I'm not a caricaturist. Oh. I'm I'm not a caricaturist. Um, mm-hmm. So when I'm drawing people, uh, like. Uh, celebrities or people that that aren't just every man. Um, mm-hmm. I, I just get the general feel of the person. Um, mm-hmm. They're if, I, if they have unusual features, then um, mm-hmm. that's that's great because <laughs> you you latch onto those. But uh, if they don't, 
<laughs> or they're wearing glasses or, and I, and I try not to practice ahead of time. Like if I know, like when I was working with CBS, when I went to the studio mm -hmm. and um, like I knew one, one week, I knew one day, I knew Oprah Winfrey was going to be there. Mm -hmm. um, that's why they had me and they didn't have me in every day, but when there's somebody mm -hmm. really famous, so they had, mm -hmm. so I was there and I, and I knew it was going to beforehand the night before I knew I was going to have to draw Oprah Winfrey. So I did practice. I thought I got, I really have to get a general feeling of, of her uh -huh. fit, features even though because people like her are so iconic and everybody knows mm. their faces though mm. drawing her is much harder and luckily mm. that day when I went in she had this her hair pulled back really tight with a ponytail which is a great thing to draw and then she had uh -huh. huge glasses this is one of her mm. looks right mm -hmm. and so that was a that was a gift but um and then I also like to draw people's bodies like how they stand or what they're kind of clothes they wear it all speaks uh -huh. to who they are and, and how you recognize them mm -hmm. so um so i guess it's, it's like uh in in a in a play you know in a theater if, if somebody it's if there's such an iconic part and somebody has to you know comes in new into the role of hello dolly you know there's a yeah, lot of, i know yeah. right. there's right. a lot of pressure <laughs> yeah and there's still some people like i just drew i i just drew um you know the new the new minority speaker of the house, Jim. I'm sorry, Hakeem Jeffries. I drew uh -huh. him the other day. He's very hard to draw, not because his face is iconic, because a lot of people don't know his face, but mm. he's got one of these faces where the features are not particularly pronounced, or they're not mm. they're not uh, there's nothing exaggerated in his face, but he's got a very mm. unique face as everybody does. So I found I, him hard I, to when draw. I, I I like that. I, as soon as I saw that, I said, "Oh, that that's that's." I thought it captured him very well. Oh, good. Thank you. I tried. Yeah. I don't know if we have it here, but. Um, I can show. I think I have it right here. I can show it to you. Okay. Um, yeah. So I drew, I didn't draw the recent um, shenanigans at the, in the house, but um, let's see. But um, I drew the January. Oh, I don't think I don't see it. Anyway, I don't want to waste the time. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, do you, you, were do you find, you know, what's that? Go ahead. You know, when, when there's something, uh, big happening in the news, like, you know, now that we, we don't have a speaker of the house, you know, does that mm -hmm. something like that, that kind of news event or non, you know, we have a non news event, or, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, trigger whatever it is, we don't really know what it is. <laughs> It's historic, that's for sure. Yes. And, uh, you know, does that trigger you to, you know, trigger an idea for you or say, I have to capture this kind of in a way that somebody would uh, if they're writing, you know, a news story and they want to, you know, like mm -hmm. the, 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 man, the dog eats, you know, dog eats man kind of idea. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. There's certain there's certain news stories that I feel like I need to draw, um, and I I feel actually fortunate that I'm not a political cartoonist for a regular newspaper because they don't get to choose. They have to draw something sometimes every single day. They have to draw. They have to find something in the news to draw about. And there's always stuff to draw about. It. The trick is finding something that other people can relate to. You know, if you're drawing in Washington or you're drawing about the, the Senate, you need to figure out a, a way to approach it. That's relatable that everybody mm -hmm. can understand. Um, mm -hmm. uh, this one, of course, is about the the women in Iran. Mm -hmm. This is one of the many few. I did a few about that, and and that any any issue about women's rights, I I try to jump on it mm -hmm. immediately because it's an important thing for me, very important to me. Um, what what were you trying to capture? I mean, I I can guess, but in that you know, it's very yeah. strong colors and. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so the interesting thing about uh, social media, Rose, and this was not done for any newspaper or anything. It wasn't for the New Yorker. It was for nobody. It was for my so my Substack newsletter and Medium, and mm -hmm. um, and Twitter. <laughs> um, is that? Uh, and I also always write with, with a drawing like this. I'll have some writing to go with it. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Sometimes that's all you need. Really, is a visual uh, that expresses mm -hmm. a feeling. I'm not mm -hmm. trying to, many political cartoonists have an idea. They want to say it, make a point. They want to give your opinion. They want to say what they think or what the issues mm -hmm. are. And, and I mm -hmm. do that too sometimes, but with social media, sometimes you don't need that. Mm -hmm. And 
just a visual um, and people like people like it because they want to share it. They want mm-hmm. they want to share the feeling of what the drawing evokes. Mm-hmm. And this is when um, when Zelensky was at the Senate and spoke to the joint session of Congress, and um, mm-hmm. he gave an Ukrainian flag to to the, our country, and Nancy Pelosi was receiving. And as you can see, they're not real caricatures, but you can you can sort of tell who the who they are. That's that's uh, yeah Kamala Harris behind her. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is a live drawing I did from the from the TV um, during that speech. It was a very moving speech. And I do a couple of drawings of him as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, no, it's a it way was, it was, that was a moment that I, you know, when I think of that speech, uh, I think of that, that moment that giving her the flag signed by the, the, you know, Ukrainian yeah. army. Oh, right. Fighting. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Mm-hmm. Powerful. And I think this is one <laughs> that you had uh, yesterday, maybe. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, so to speak for itself, I guess. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, my my newsletter is not always political, but um, it's uh, I, Substack is a great a great uh, platform, and it's a new kind of platform. Mm-hmm. I've been on there a little over a year now. Um, it's a if people don't know it, it's a way it's a newsletter model where you can sign up for my 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 newsletters and I do it every weekday. Um, I'll send out a short written thing and, and a cartoon and mm-hmm. um, people can subscribe for free, comes right into your inbox or you can become a paid subscriber, which is a great gift. So it's a way for artists and writers to connect with their audience directly and without having to go through a gatekeeper uh, mm-hmm. like, like an editor or um, mm-hmm. Do you find that, uh, do you get comments from either paid or free, you know, subscribers that trigger you to do something new or influence you in that direct, you know, which you don't get as much if you're Mm -hmm. writing for a publication? Right. Oh, that's a good question. Well, what's interesting is that with the Substack, I, you can set it up any way you want as the, as the author. And Mm -hmm. I've set it up so that only paid subscribers can comment. Um, so that's one of the benefits of being a paid subscriber is you can comment and, and mm-hmm, talk okay. to me. Um, but uh, what, I, what I also give to my paid subscribers aside from that, and also I, they get uh, extra content during the week, we also do a monthly Zoom. So I Zoom with my, my subscribers and, and they, some of them are really savvy and they really helpful to me um, uh-huh. personally about my work, my career, not so much my drawing, but because there's not that many of them are cartoonists, but, um, you know, they're savvy uh, media and culture people. Um, uh-huh. Uh-huh. And, and so I love just ha- getting to know them and it's like a little community. It's nice. Uh-huh. Very nice. Nice. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. Um, there was one that, uh, one cartoon that I, I really liked uh, that I think I saw in your exhibit. <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> Some kids at school call you a feminist mom, but I punched him out. <laughs> so, uh, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, when you put together the exhibit at the. I was. It was just amazing. I had read a small, uh, well, you know, a small clip that this you were going to have this exhibit about very funny ladies and have Roz Chast and and other woman cartoonists that you you spoke to for your book and I got there and there was just a line around, this is for the, uh, <laughs> the I society know. of illustrators at on 63rd street. And it was, I, I don't, I, I think I said, I think I, I pulled a press pass or I did something, but I got in. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, it was a great evening. Uh, tell us who's in this uh, photo. Yeah. Um, so on my my right there, on the left of the photograph, that's Liana Fink. She's a cartoonist, relatively recent cartoonist. I forget what year she started, but like a, a few years before this was taken. Uh, behind me is Carolina Johnson with her dog, uh, whose name I forget. She's been around since the 90s, I think. Next to her is Emma Allen, who's the new cartoon editor. And, and then to her left is Roz Chast. And um, this was an exhibit in 2017 w- 
right the right after what you mentioned was that there was an issue in the magazine that had more women than men in the mm -hmm. in the in the in that particular issue and i have to give a lot of credit to my husband michael who is a historian of the magazine's cartoons um yeah. and i am too but he he noticed that he actually noticed when he looked at oh. that issue at that time mm -hmm. that they were so he's the one that responsible so then when i found that out i thought well i have to do something about this so i got in touch with uh, the director of the Society of Illustrators and I said, can we do an exhibit? And she said, yeah. yes. So uh, I put together an exhibit of um, old, older women and de deceased women cartoons from the New Yorker and then modern women. Um, and this led to the new edition of my book, Funny, Very Funny Ladies, because Funny Ladies came out in 2005. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, so that exhibit, we had a panel discussion with Roz and mm -hmm. some other women, I think they were, in that picture, I forget who exactly was mm. the panel. And um, we must have just really hit a nerve because people came out, and this was before 2017, so it wasn't like post-pandemic craziness, yeah. people wanting to get out. Uh, <laughs> and, and like you said, the Society of Illustrators is, is, a, is a one building, a little beautiful building uh, on the yeah. Upper East Side, a small mm -hmm. townhouse. And it was packed, they kept sending people upstairs to other rooms because there were some people coming in to see this. Well, they stopped panel. people. There were police that just wouldn't let people in. I mean, it was so bad. And um, <laughs> so my friends couldn't get in. And um, and David Remnick, the senior editor of The New Yorker, came and he had to argue his way in. He said, I'm the editor of The New Yorker. Can I please come in? <laughs> and then he told, me, he told me this. He said, and, and then I had to sit on the floor. So... <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see him there. I could there were so many people I couldn't see him. Uh, and this is Emma Allen. Mm -hmm. And what uh influence has she had since she's she well, came yeah, on in she, mm -hmm. she was hired that year in, in 17 and she started mm -hmm. bringing in women immediately. Uh she started bringing in more women, cartoonists, by you know, mm -hmm. uh buying their work. And um so she's David hired her, and and so the two of them together are responsible for increasing the diversity of of gender and and now uh, uh, color. So there's more uh, people of color drawing cartoons for the magazine now. So that's what I'll just say her name again: uh, Emma Allen, A L L E N. Uh -huh. Uh, uh -huh. And uh, tell us a little about how many uh, submissions. Uh, you know, when Tuesday comes, how many submissions? Yeah. The, ma the magazine. Well, Rose, I don't know the numbers. I don't, but it's it's over a thousand each week. So we've got well, in in your book. It's I think one of the Lee Lorenz or David Remnick says mm -hmm. two thousand. That's probably if that's what I said. I don't remember. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's huge, and there's people. So you've got your regular people, <clears throat> which the numbers are now much greater. <clears throat> mm -hmm. of the regular sort of having been bought cartoonists. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, over probably 40 or 50 of us. Um, and then there's all the cartoons that come in from people who have not published yet. And there's mm -hmm. a way to do that now. If you Google it, uh, you can find it, um, mm. how to submit online. So once a month they look, it's a, it's a way to submit 10 drawings. I think they request you submit 10 drawings to this site and they will, mm -hmm. they look at it, uh, okay. once a month and, and maybe find people that way too. Cool. So, uh, yeah. we have a question from uh, Jonathan Doherty. Uh, Hi, Jonathan. Saying, okay, friend He's a friend of, of mine. Yours. Okay, um, he's saying, "I wonder how the subject matter of your drawing has changed or not over time." Um. Well, it it, it in the New Yorker, it hasn't really changed much. Still about daily life and um, uh, politics from time to time. Um, but, it, you know, around in the early 2000s, I, I decided that I wanted to draw more about women's rights and more about politics because the internet was happening and there was a place for me to publish those things because I did, you know, there are not many places to publish political cartoons then or now and get paid for them. So I just decided it was important to me to do that just for my own sanity and wanting to say things and talk, you know, 
because I see, I say this all the time, but I see cartoons as dialogue. It's a way to, to exchange ideas with people and everybody loves cartoons. So you, you have a, an audience <laughs> just by drawing a cartoon. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm more, much more political than I was when I started. I was more openly political. Hmm. Jonathan. <laughs> I think you showed a, one of your, um, showing your first cartoon that was accepted at the New Yorker uh, had no words. It was uh, yeah for drawings. Has that become something that's not only with you, yeah. but with other people more? Yeah, well, when I was young, I really relied a lot on drawing and not talking. I was really shy and I, didn't, I was suspicious of words. I was not a big reader. And so I really loved cartoons that I saw that I read that were mm -hmm. without words. I really loved the visual storytelling that you can find. Um, trying to think of an example. Well, Saul Steinberg, um, other pe lots of other people. But um, so I was driven to, to create cartoons without words. And William Sean, who's the senior editor that was there when I first sold, he, I was told, I never met him, I was told he liked captionless cartoons, that he was, he, he was happy. And he also liked sequential cartoons. So a lot of my early cartoons were like sequential and without mm -hmm. words, um, mm -hmm. but um, not, they're not as popular now uh, mm. anymore. And um, they're mm -hmm. hard to do, they're hard to maintain because mm. they're, they're not as mm. easy to come by. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, question you know now we're seeing in artificial intelligence right we're seeing app, apps like dalio and we're seeing writing mm -hmm. through chat gpt you know which had a million uh people subscribe in the first five days and i've tried it you know it, so it's like you talk to it so you can say to it like i did for new year's i said you know what what kind of uh what can I do for a New Year's party? And it gave you ten. It gave me ten ways, you know, to have a New Year's party, and they they were all had to do with costumes. And then I refined the question. I said, you know, give me uh, ways to do a New Year's party with no costumes. And then it gave me themes, you know, that might have to do with food. <laughs> <laughs> and I asked it to tell me a haiku, but and I asked it for a haiku about a dog eating cherry tomatoes. <laughs> and I, it was pretty close to, you know, the, um, the syllables for a haiku 757 it was pretty close. It wasn't uh -huh. terrible, but when I asked it to, um, you know, write, uh, like Milton's paradise lost, you know, or, you know, it was ridiculous. No, it was, it was not like Milton's paradise lost, but people, you know, are saying that these sorts of things, you know, what, what will they do to the integrity of artists work you know writers and and you know um, visual mm -hmm. artists mm -hmm. um and you know is that anything you've thought about a little bit yeah um the good thing about cartoons is i'm sure that somebody's trying to use ai for creating cartoons but and i know there's a lot of drawing programs or drawing ways of draw, drawing with the computer mm -hmm. assistance. And we all use technology to, 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 to either enhance or fix or color or whatever mm -hmm. our drawing. But um, um, the, two, the two organizations that I'm connected with, the Society of Illustrators and the American Association of Editorial Cartoonists have come out with statements saying that they, mm -hmm. they disapprove of certain technologies that, that use art programs. And I don't even know what I'm talking about. I can see, when I look at a drawing sometimes, I can see it that it's been done with a photograph drawn over the photograph. And um, mm. I use photographs, yes. I take photographs and I'll draw from them, not on them, but I'll, I'll look at them like I'm looking at a something in real time. But so it's, it's a complicated issue, but I think um, we really should, uh, try to respect and admire and promote artists that don't use, um, I don't want to say don't use technology because we do, because that's that's fine with me, some technologies, but it's, I guess there's a certain 
crossover point where, um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like, there's something on cameras, right? There where you can give them a photograph and it'll make it into a drawing, just boom. And it looks like it's somebody sketched it, but I, as an artist, I can see that it has been done by, mm -hmm. by a program. And it's not really done by an artist's hand in any stretch, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's annoying to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm certainly with you on that. I just, I just okay. wonder, you know, what's gonna, because I mean, I wouldn't want to write a poem and somebody take take a poem, or you know, and and just copy it and change the words around yeah. a little bit, and right. you know, uh, I think a cartoon would be especially hard to uh, a cartoon or a poem, really, you know, would be especially hard to do. But right, uh, yeah, I don't think computers have a sense of humor. Uh, yeah, last time. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that, that's really hard too. Yeah. yeah. So, but, uh, but it, I think it is something that, you know, we're going to be seeing. Um, so, so the advances are, are so rapid, uh, you know, so, cause I think this like chat GPT that I was, that I, that is free to use. And I was looking at, uh, it's like the third iter iteration, but it's much, much wow. better than the previous one, which was just like, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, six months ago or something, mm -hmm. you know, so, you know, anyway. what this reminds me, Rose, one thing I did over the pandemic, and I was doing it a little mm -hmm. bit before that as well, is I would, I had this set up in my, in my studio where I have, uh, holds my phone over my hand and I draw with a pen and a crow quill, which is my normal when I work on paper. Mm -hmm. And I would, every day I would draw and on Instagram live and talk to people and draw mm -hmm just talk about what's going on and draw what was going on, not, not coming up with a set cartoon per se, but just uh -huh. draw, drawing about the pandemic, drawing about Black Lives Matter, just drawing about people yeah. struggling, whatever. And I think people enjoyed it. They told me how much they loved it because it was calming. It's watching a hand draw, a real mm -hmm. hand, not a computer, but a hand uh -huh. doing something uh -huh. creative. It wasn't necessarily my hand, but it was a hand drawing. And I, th yeah. I think there's a connection there that people still crave and like so yeah i remember you did that on uh it was like every day you did it at the same time 5 15 yeah, on this every day yeah. The pandemic. yeah 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 mm -hmm. uh to go back to your childhood you know did you did you know you always wanted to be an artist a writer did you did you even know you know you wanted to be a cartoonist yeah, um, I was drawing early on, and my mother gave me a book of cartoons by James Thurber when I was seven, and I started tracing, and and uh, she smiled, and that was the, that was that. <laughs> I just it's, I just knew immediately that I could make somebody smile with my cartoons, and that was a joy, uh, and and I didn't have to talk. <laughs> so, because um, I as a kid I was always afraid of somebody talking to me, so I would just if you're sitting there drawing, they don't bother you. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I always wanted to be a cartoonist. And I grew up during the during the civil rights era and the Watergate, and I grew up in Washington, and uh -huh. that's when I got into politics. And I wanted to use my cartoons mm. to make to try to help <laughs> make the world a better place. So um, yeah, that's awesome. It's a it's um, mm -hmm. is there a question? Um, let's see. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Uh, Anne Ariaga, who's a friend. Yeah. Uh, my young daughter loves to draw on the iPad. Oh, so she asked the mm -hmm. question. I just asked how old mm -hmm. were you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I had very did encouraging your, parents. Did your own children, uh, you have two daughters. Did they take after you? Did they want to be yeah. like mom? Yeah. No, well, I don't know if they wanted to be cartoonists, but they drew a lot. They still draw. Mm -hmm. Yeah. draw with them. So my husband's a cartoonist, so we would draw, sit and get these big pads of paper and sit on the floor and just draw you know, <laughs> kitties and cars and whatever. And uh, they're very good at drawing, uh, but they both are in, they're grown up now and they have jobs and they're both in the book world, but one's a bookseller and the other's a librarian. So they went mm. that direction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Uh, well, uh, it's really since, uh, and I just want to say for our audience that Liza was kind enough uh, a year ago, I was still I was doing a show with uh, Sri Srinivasan, who is teaching now at the Walter Cronkite School of Journalism, and uh, has been a digital innovator. And we were doing us in a way that 
you were doing your your drawing. We were doing a, a live stream show every day about all aspects of COVID. And when September, I mean, uh, January 6th happened, I think I texted with Liza and I said, are you drawing, you know, anything about this? And you said, no, no, I, I think I, I can't. I just, I can't, you know, I can't uh, face this. Uh. You texted me and then I said, well, you know, and then you said, then, then in response, you said, well, maybe I will and I should. And, and so we, <laughs> we did a show. So I booked you for a show that night, you know, being a producer. And we had two other guests and we talked that night about January 6th, which mm -hmm. is tomorrow. So <laughs> and here we are. <laughs> I don't know what it says. We don't have a, um, nothing can happen in the, you know, right? Nothing can happen. Nothing can. Yeah, hey, that day, that day. I mean, I I don't think I was drawing. I was watching the TV, and I was like, my mouth was open, like just totally shocked and unsure what was happening. And I did end up doing a draw, one drawing, um, but it was hard to. That's the problem with that that day is there's, it was happening so fast, and we didn't really know what was happening. And so, how do yeah. you draw about that? How, yeah. how do you when you don't really know what it is? <laughs> yeah. So. We now know what it is. We know what it is now. So I, I did do a lot of drawings about the yeah about uh -huh. the committees, uh, the committee, uh -huh. uh, mm -hmm. and and all their findings and the impeachment trial and so forth. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Uh, so tell us who who are your three women to follow and and uh, a little okay. about them. Um, oh, that's me. <laughs> uh, so you asked me this question. I thought, well, Melissa Matani is a new friend of mine. I met her in Norway. Uh, she's a journalist for CNN, and she is so much fun, to, a person, but she's also really um, uh, knowledgeable about international affairs and, and women's rights also. So she's really interesting to follow, and, and she's very active on Instagram as well. So if you follow her on both places, you will not be sorry. Um, she's just always, always stirring things, stirring things up and talking about things. So, Great. And um, Heather Cox Richardson, she is a, she's someone also who even newer, she's not a friend, but she's somebody I've been following um, on Twitter now, but also she has a Substack, Letters from America, I think it's called. Mm -hmm. uh, but she's a historian, and she writes every single day on Substack, every seven days a week. She'll put something out there that is about what she'll sort of summarize what she thinks is happening in, in that day, what's important to focus on. And she will often connect it to his, histor historical mm -hmm. uh, American mm -hmm. um, events and, and mm -hmm. issues. So fascinating. She's amazing. And uh, um yeah, so I would su I would suggest you subscribe to her Substack as well. Let's Thank follow you. her on Instagram. And Joyce Carol Oates. So <laughs> she, I met her briefly um, mm, five six years ago. She's she always goes to this event at, uh, with a publication that I have worked for in the past, Narrative Magazine, which is an online literary magazine founded by um, two people that I'm friends with. And they also run cartoons. And so I've had cartoons in, the, in there. And they published my book, Women on Men. Anyway, they have a fundraiser every year, Narrative Magazine. And she, Joyce, always goes. And I met her there. And I live draw it for Narrative. I live draw their fundraiser. Um, oh. And I got to draw mm -hmm. her. And she tweeted mm -hmm. about my drawing at the time. And she still tweets about my drawings from time to time. And she tweets about my newsletter. She has a Substack also, which is really interesting. She doesn't publish on that very often, but when she does, mm. it's really interesting. And mm -hmm. she's a great tweeter. She tweets a lot. Mm. And she's always involved with, you know, politics. Uh, she uh -huh. loves cats, so she's got cats. She's <laughs> just very present on Twitter and um, funny, but serious, um, thoughtful, silly. So she's an interesting person to follow as well. I think I do follow her. I, I don't follow mm -hmm. the other two. So I have two new, mm -hmm. two new women to follow. So thank you. Yeah. Uh, so uh, for final thoughts, I would ask you, um, you know, looking at the arc of your career, you know, what would you say to people who are thinking about pivoting or changing 
you know, as you look at your evolution? Do it. (laughs) 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 Um, Just in general changing. Yeah. I think you have to take, take those chances. And if you're really interested in something, um, go for it. When I was, when I moved to New York in, in the late seventies, I, I had a job uh, um, at the, at a museum, natural history museum it was a great job, but I really wanted to be a cartoonist. And um, it took me a couple of years after I sold it to the New Yorker, it took me a year or two to make that change, to quit my job. Mm-hmm. It was hard to quit. That was a good job. Um, but I took the leap and I'm obviously happy that I did. So um, I'm always, and you know, I'm always adopting new technologies, new combining new things, writing, drawing, videotaping, live drawing on the street, and you know, my face (laughs) and people. And, you know, I'm always on the subway, right? You're, you're, you're off. Yeah, live drawing on the subway (laughs) (laughs) on my phone (laughs) with my finger. Oh, yeah. um, Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. (laughs) So, uh, I think, and screenwriting is a new thing that I'm trying. I'm, I'm, I feel like movies and TV are cousins to cartoons. Um, uh-huh. So I'm trying that now. Like a lot, I know a lot of people are trying to write a screenplay, and I've written, I've written one. So it's not like I just trying. I'm actually doing it. But um, so you got to try new things. You got to keep expanding and and uh, exploring new possibilities. That's, that's great. It's very yeah. inspiring to hear. Um, Is there any also, one, thing, one more thing. I, I forgot yes. to mention this to you, but I'm teaching classes now in the history of New Yorker cartoons at the 92nd mm-hmm. Street Y. Oh, NY. Mm-hmm. And it's called, now it's called 92 NY. Um, and it's virtual. And so um, I did one in the fall. It was two classes, mm-hmm. two things. Mm-hmm. But now we're doing a new one in, in March. And it's going to be four classes. And so if you go to the 92 NY, um, you'll be able to find find it pretty soon. I don't think we've listed it yet, but uh-huh. it's fun. So Oh, that's great. I've, I've taken poetry classes oh, there. Great. Yeah. yeah, they're such a great institution. Amazing. It is. It is. Uh, and is there any uh, like screenplay or documentary that you can tell us about a little bit? Well, I want to make a documentary on, on very funny ladies. Um, Mm -hmm. so that's what I'm working on in that regard. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, yeah, very funny ladies and the funny ladies is the first one. Um, and cartoon marriage is a a book I did with my husband, uh, uh, 10 years ago, uh, which is cartoons about marriage, but also some graphic narratives we did together about our marriage. We've been married 33 (laughs) years now. Um, and that one, that's what got me started with the, with the screenwriting is that that one was oh. optioned for TV and a script was written up oh. by me, written by Terry Minsky. And it came very close to being picked up mm. uh, for a pilot, but mm-hmm. it didn't. But that got me interested in that form. I, and I really uh-huh. enjoy writing, writing that way. I've never written a novel, which I find uh-huh. daunting. I don't know how people do that. Screenwriting is equally difficult, but it's just less words. <laughs> and it's more, I can see, I can visualize yeah. what's happening. More, more so, of a conversation maybe in the way like your, your, maybe your work is. Visual and, yeah. Mm. And uh, I've always said that cartoonists, uh, cartoonists are like, um, a, a single panel cartoon is a set. So cartoonists are the screenwriter, they put the words in the mouths of the, of the actors or the little uh-huh. cartoon actors. They put the words, <laughs> they, they dress the actors, you put them in a setting and you make them move. So it's like a little scene, a little little play there on that yeah. single panel or a True. little movie. Or, you know, and you're the story. director. Director. Exactly. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> and the other the other project is a script that I've written, a feature script that has, um, it's supposed to be, it's I'm right. It was written to be live action, but with animation, animated elements to it. So, mm. cool. Yeah. And so I'll ask you the other question, which is a final thought for for people starting out. You know, what would you say? Is there any different advice? Would it would it also be to say, you know, do it, or or is there something else you would say somebody starting out? And as a you know, interested in being a cartoonist writer. Oh, I'm not being a cartoonist. Um, 
just keep drawing all the time and look at cartoons. Look at the cartoons mm -hmm. that you want to draw that you that you like. Mm -hmm. um, and when you're really starting out, there's no problem. There's no nothing wrong with tracing. That's what I did when I was a child. Um, mm -hmm. But you have to find your own style. Of course, you can't trace other people's work. <laughs> it's stealing. <laughs> yeah, uh, but uh, um, it's not an easy field to get into right now. There's not, when I started, there were more outlets for cartoons. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you really want to do it, you just have to really um, study. There are more places to study cartooning in colleges. Mm -hmm. There's an MFA program at the Center for Cartoon Studies. Mm -hmm. There are more places to publish graphic narratives and graphic novels now. Mm -hmm. the, you know, there's no money in it, but you can, you can, uh, like, um, what's the name of the, uh, Fantagraphics is a famous public uh, uh, publishing house that does a lot mm -hmm. of graphic novels. Um, mm -hmm. So there's there's not much money for in it. But kids publishing, right? There's more. I mean, it's a new genre for children's books. That's true, too. In young adult graphic novels, mm -hmm. that's true. There's, yeah. there's a lot of those out there. That's true. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's the point. So, yeah, that's where you might, or animation. There's mm -hmm. lots of places yeah. to study that. Okay. Uh, but um, single panel cartooning, not so much. But the New Yorker is much more open to new people than it ever was. Mm -hmm. It's more, mm -hmm. it's, it's bringing in more people all the time. So it's a different model right now than when I started. It's so, great. That's encouraging. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see. A uh, question. Uh, well, Michael Garland says, great show. And Jonathan Doherty. Um, how often you see a moment in your live drawing and know it is the, the image that will speak to people translate oh. and, and translate in a cartoon. The Zelensky no, flag no. moment is obvious, but no. when, how do you know it? I don't know, Jonathan. I just use my <laughs> instinct. Mm -hmm. I think having, having been a, I think having been a cartoonist observing culture and people, for 42 years, or most of my <laughs> life, professionally 42 years. I think I I have a an eye for what's mm -hmm. maybe of interest to other people. Mm -hmm. okay. And also if it's interesting to me, because when you're looking at my live drawings, you're getting my perspective. So it, it has to be sort of interesting to me. But I think there's been times when I think, oh yeah, I think people would like to see that. So I'll draw that. Mm -hmm. But um, mm -hmm. usually it usually has to be interesting to me. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's not like you're you're thinking oh really out loud like what will be interesting to other people because it always is informed by your perspective. Yeah, I think I probably do subconsciously consider my audience. You yeah, know, like what they want to mm -hmm. be. Yeah. Um, but uh, and um, yeah. So it, like. With this recent hearings, not hearings, the, the vote thing, I couldn't figure out a way to draw that that would be uh, mm -hmm. interesting. I didn't really try, so, mm -hmm. but I felt like, um, I don't know, maybe I should have, but that's, I could still do it tomorrow, I suppose. Yes, that's right. <laughs> 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 it's going to be going on for a while. <laughs> oh. uh, let's see, somebody on my... Twitter account, my woman to follow account asked, um, I don't know if this, uh, a glimpse of Liza drawing on her IG, uh, as you know, well, on her, on your, yeah, if you account. go to my IG, you can see, I don't know if you can, Stefan, I don't know if you can put it up there, but I have live drawings on my uh, reels. I do reels mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, of me drawing. Mm -hmm. This is my, Great. I don't know what he's, yeah, yeah, I don't know what. Yeah, that's well. So this is a video. This is video capture. So that's different. That's interesting. Uh -huh. That's I was on the Jersey Shore. That's using okay. my iPad to get to capture the drawing mm -hmm. uh, as it emerges, and I speed mm -hmm. it up mm -hmm. with another program. There we mm -hmm. go. Mm -hmm. Thank you, whoever said that. That's you can see. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm experimenting with. Um, reels and i'm also i'm i do this on uh tiktok a little bit oh okay 
Um, and is it similar what you're doing for Reels and TikTok? Or? Yeah, drawing. Mm -hmm. Usually with a very minimal idea. I just, mm -hmm. and if you had audio on this, you'd be able to hear the scritch of the pen, which some people really like. The audio is so good on the iPhone mm -hmm. that you can hear the sound mm -hmm. of the pen. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a whole tactile experience. <laughs> it's great how much movement you get with a uh, minimum of lines. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I am. Uh, yeah. Um, if anybody knows James Thurber, they'll see the connection there. I love, I love mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. using few lines. Well, thank you, Liza. If you could just wait, I'm going to make an announcement or two. And if you could wait for me uh, in the green room, I right. will see you in just a minute. Okay. Thank you so thank much, you Liza. Having. It was. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Really nice. an honor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Thank you, everyone. Uh, Happy New Year again. Uh, really a pleasure to uh, to be uh, bring you this show and bring you such a great uh, artist and um, uh, observer uh, and woman like Liza Donnelly. Uh, Judith Nichols is saying, thanks, wonderful show. Uh, we're getting a, hand, a clap from Jonathan Doherty. Uh, and uh, just want to, I hope you'll join me for my next show uh, in a few weeks uh, or so. And uh, wanted to uh, say my, I'm part of the Digimentor group uh, and they do a Sunday New York Times show. Uh, and this week they're going to be looking at the year in pictures. Uh, and the show starts at 8.30 on January 8th. Uh, so be there. It's always a great show. So thank you, every, thank you very much. Uh, it was really great to see everybody. Uh, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.